those hands for Jesus. I said for Jesus. If Jesus was standing before you and you had 60 seconds to give him your best praise, do it the way you know how to. Come on, clap, shout. Give God the loudest shout of praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. The Bible says in the presence of the Lord is what? The fullness of joy. I believe that the church, the body of Christ, is supposed to be the manufacturers of joy. Because we carry the presence of God. Is that true? And more than ever before, I am excited, I'm humbled, and I'm honored to be here again. I want you to please help me celebrate um, our reverend for this privilege. Thank you, sir. Amen. And also, I want to celebrate specially um, the team of elders and deacons and the pastors. Can we please give them a bless you? Thank you. You know, the Bible says that the elders that rule it well are worthy of double honor. It's not easy to be in the service of God. So I honor you, sirs and mas. I acknowledge what you are doing. I'm standing as fathers and mothers over us and what God is doing. Thank you so much. And I'm happy to see every one of us again. I think officially for me it's Happy New Year in May. Amen. I'm so happy to be here. Please celebrate God for your lives. Amen. Now before we sit down, I want you to know that um, I believe this is a Thanksgiving service. So I, I'm not going to preach a long sermon. But I came here with a message from the Lord in my heart. Maybe not for everybody, but maybe for a few individuals here. And I want you to pay attention in the next few minutes. And let's allow God to speak to us so that we can move with revelation into the Thanksgiving. And I assure you that because of this service, something new is going to be done in somebody's life. There's never been a time that the people of God, all through scripture, praised and thanked God that God did not act or move. Maybe there were times where people prayed and God did nothing or God was silent. But there was never a time where praise and thanksgiving was ignored by God. In fact, it's the one sacrifice that the Bible says we should continually offer. It says, by him, therefore, Hebrews 13, 15, let us offer continually. I thought that the sacrifices were over and done away with the priesthood of Aaron. But in the priesthood of Jesus Christ, the Bible says there is a sacrifice we still offer. It's called the sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of our lips. What is the fruit of your lips? words that give confession to the name of jesus that's why we must be very active in times of praise and worship it's not something you do passively you do it as though jesus was standing right before you and when you have the opportunity to bless and to thank him open up your he wants to hear those things from you he knows he knows all that you will say about him in fact there is nothing we can say that can quantify who he is but he wants to hear you say it are we together and i believe that's a culture that we are going to learn and imbibe continually in this church oh by the way i really appreciated the ministry of our mommies the zumota matter please celebrate god for them thank you thank you Mas. i think i have to be coming every sunday morning just to come and listen to them amen and you guys are amazing too god bless you amen please lift your hands father tonight i pray i've not come with my words i have come with your word and i ask that you speak to our hearts i ask that you build faith in us i ask that joy be restored let your presence be manifest in this place we thank you because where two or three are gathered in your name you are there and let your name be glorified in Jesus name please be seated in the presence of God God bless you Habakkuk chapter 3 
Habakkuk chapter 3 Give thanks with a grateful heart Give thanks to the glorious one Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ the Son How many of you remember that song? Give thanks with a grateful heart Give thanks to the Oh, give thanks because it's given Jesus Christ, the Son, and now, and now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich, because of what the Lord. take just 30 seconds look at your life from january till this time and look at everything that god has taken you through you just have 30 seconds to flash back all the challenges the hurdles the trials situations and things that you never thought you would come out from times where you felt that you cried for help and there was no help and if you can and you are grateful lift your voice and thank him Lift your voice and thank Him. Lift your voice and thank Him. Thank you for delivering me from the fire. Thank you for not allowing the waters to swallow me. If it were not the Lord who was on our side, so may Israel say. He said our enemies would have swallowed us up. But blessed be the Lord who has not given our souls as a prey for them. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You have done me well. You have done me well. You have done me well. Jesus. thank you father we thank you we thank you for divine help we thank you because in the midst of everything we stand more than the conquerors we do not take for granted the things that you have done that you are doing even the things that we are not aware that you did it even the things we attributed to our intellect we attributed to our strength even in the times where we said by my strength and my power i have got this 
Lord, we come today to acknowledge that you are the one. And your name be exalted. In Jesus' name. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 to 19. I know it's not always a popular book that we read in church, but um, it's something that God has for us from that book. And I want us to look at it really briefly. Usually when I go to minister, I take my time to study the Bible just so that I can give God's people something that is rich, richly endowed from the word of God. But for this particular message, <laughs> I don't think I really sat down to do anything. God just dropped this scripture in my heart and said, this is what to share with my people. So, let's look at it. Verse 17. Habakkuk chapter 3. Through, he said, though the fig tree may not blossom. I want you to pay attention to these three verses we'll read. Verse 17 to 19. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines. Though the labor of the olive may fall, and the fields yield no food. Though the flock may be cut off from the fold. And there be no head in the stalls. Verse 18, he says, Yes, I will rejoice in the Lord. And I will do what? I will joy in the God of my salvation. Why? He said, The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet. And he will make me walk on my high heels. King James, I believe, says my high places. And I pray today that God will give somebody here divine supernatural speed for the next level. And for someone else, rather than speed, God will just elevate you to the next level. Amen. What you don't need is speed. You need elevation. That's the reason why it says, they that wait on the Lord shall what? Renew their strength. And because they waited on the Lord while others were on the move, it said they shall mount up with wings. When they were waiting on God, others ran ahead of them. Ten steps ahead of them. And the only way God can cover up that gap is say, you instead of running, fly first. See the way God's procession is. Fly first. He said, then they will run and not be weary. They will walk and not fail. But in the human, you know, humanly speaking, you walk first, then you run, and then you fly. But when God is ready to cover up time for you and to give you speed, he elevates you to begin to fly. I wish your amen was louder. It will be your own. And I'm telling you, that's what God is going to do for somebody today. That's the reason why you must praise and thank him today because that is the ticket to this that is about to happen for you. But look at this scripture. We are used to thanking God for the things he has done. We are used to mentioning that God did this and God did that. And so we thank him like the May celebrants came out. Virtually all of them there had one or two things to thank God for. Maybe God blessed them with a car or a house or something. Good to see you, sir. Or, you know, I saw our reverend came out. I was wondering if he would not come out. In my heart. You know, but he came out. I think that's the grandest of all. So we are used to thanking and appreciating God for the things he has done. But how about thanking him when you don't see that he has done anything? And that's the scripture we read. He said, though the fig tree does not blossom, though there is no fruit on the vines, he said, though the labor of the holy failed, you had a poor harvest. You bought grains last year and you stored it. Hoping that this year, when the prices of beans is up, you will sell and make gain. And the prices fell so down, you had to sell it half the price you bought it. This is your condition. That's why I say I'm not speaking to everybody today. He said, even the stall, at least, farming didn't work for me. At least I bought some goats. I have some goats and some sheep. And you went there and saw that out of ten, seven, you had seven mortality. Or oh, I know there will be people who do poetry here. Yes or yes? It can't be no. Yes, it, can't, it has to be yes. You bought 2,000 beds. Stock them. After seven weeks, I'll begin to sell them and make money. 
and you went there and saw that 500 died and the remaining 1,005 75 are sick in fact 10 were almost dying when you came and while you are trying to handle that you realize that your contract with this organization is ending this month ah and I've not saved now the best one man in scripture whose life looks like this passage we just read is Job this was a blessed man the Bible says he was the greatest of all the men of the East now the Bible is always particular to identify wisdom and greatness with the people of the East in those days you know the reason was because they knew a lot of astrology you know there's a difference between astrology and astronomy astronomy is science astrology is witchcraft do you understand what I'm saying how they study the constellations and how these things work to procure a supernatural advantage in the natural the Bible says Job was the greatest of all but in one day he didn't know the conversation God had with Satan just the same way some of you are going through some things now in your life and you are doing vigils and casting and binding all the devils and unknown to you God allowed the devil to come and try you because let's face it it's not everything that you will cast the devil and he will go there are some issues in your life that he may have a legal ground or a legal reason in Job's case he had approval from God and the Bible says in one day he lost everything knowing all the investment all went down but here's what the Bible says in where we read it said though all these things happen and it looks like there is no cause for you to rejoice he said yet I will rejoice is that how he says it yet that means in the midst of all of these things I will what rejoice notice he used the word will there will will it didn't say I should rejoice will it means it's an act of my will Psalms 25 from verse 5 to 6 let me show you something again we'll come back to Habakkuk Psalms 25 from verse 5 to 6 look at look at what David says here it says sorry 27 27 verse 5 to 6 27 verse 5 to 6 I beg your pardon it says for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion and in the secret place of his tabernacle he shall hide me he shall set me high upon a rock verse 6 and now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me therefore therefore means because of what is happening in previous verse because I know that my head shall be lifted up when a man's head is down is down in shame or is down in reproach or is down in grief so David was saying because I know that in the midst of this situation these trials that my head shall be lifted up above my enemies because every time you are not happy there are some people that are happy that you are not happy I hope you know I'm not preaching here but this is the truth the Bible is full of it Micah 7 8 he said rejoice not over me my enemies even Jesus had enemies and they were so bold they stood before him in the, on the cross and say if you could save others save yourself but the Bible says had they known the princes of this world they would not have crucified the Lord of glory they and Satan engineering them didn't know that it was a plan by God that through death death will be defeated and redemption for mankind will come but look at this verse 6 it says and now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me therefore I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle I will I will again offer sacrifices of joy why is it a sacrifice of joy joy is supposed to be out of excitement but the Bible says this joy is a sacrifice the thing about a sacrifice is that it pains you or it costs you if it, it if it does not cost you anything or it doesn't pain you it's not yet a sacrifice if you have 50,000 and you give God 10,000 it's not sacrifice I know you some people may not agree because they say ah, apostle you don't know my budget oh. but if you have 50,000 and you give God 45 that's a sacrifice 
that's the kind of giving you give and for two weeks you are just thinking what whether you were what was wrong with you when you were doing have you given like that before how many of us have given like that before ah, may you be may they be multiplied in this church you know because every time it seems like god robs you he's about to elevate you no man out gives god i hope you know no man but in that time you feel like god robbed you so that's the kind of giving you sit down for two weeks and your brain will start calculating later and you'll be asking yourself why was i not discalculative in the act now this is what david said he says because i know god will lift up my head from shame to glory will lift up my head from depression to promotion he said because of that i will do something i will rejoice and offer sacrifices of joy that means joy is a sacrifice and that's why i use the word will is an act of your will you don't do it because things are okay around you you don't do it out of excitement you do it because this is what must be done like the way abraham took his child and went willfully to the mountain for three days if it was me on the first day i would have turned back we will still discuss especially in the new testament church that we are god is a merciful god isn't it you are smiling yes now god is merciful now say the lord is rich is slow to anger and rich in mercy is compassionate as a father pities his children god will understand but the first day abraham kept going towards that mountain knowing that he was about to kill what he waited for you think he waited 25 years but if you study history very well and study genesis 11 and 12 abraham waited for almost 40 years because the bible told us that god called him when he was in mesopotamia 75 years that's in acts chapter 7 but in genesis the bible didn't show us mesopotamia the bible shows us when he had left mesopotamia to Haran, and he had waited 40 years for this child he was going to kill so there are seasons where you rejoice not because things are good can i tell you something can i say something we do not rejoice because all is well we rejoice till all is well you didn't hear what i said let me say it again we do not rejoice because all is well we rejoice till all is well joy in the midst of the storms and so the bible says job lost everything but what did he do when he heard that everything he had had been destroyed including his children at least let me have children that will grow up and take care of me they all died the question is when do i start giving back based on what the bible gave us the scenario the bible gave us job was already an old man because his children were more or less adults and there were 10 of them so maybe the wife had even passed childbearing age now at, let let it be that my children are alive since i lost all my investment they will at least grow up and finish school finish mbbs finish nursing and take care of me and they are all dead that means my future is no longer sure but in the midst of that think of it the bible says he, he tore his clothes and he shaved his head that is the grief of a man but this is what a spiritual man will do the bible says he fell down and worshiped is it in your bible in the midst of that you are worshiping some people will take off from church for two weeks off you know you take off from your working place some will take off from church when you go and visit them say ah, brother what happened now we didn't see you yesterday so so family weekend we didn't see you they say kai kabari koe but in the midst of that the bible didn't say he went and came back the next day in that showing you a key in the midst of hard times when you go through a challenge when you go through a storm that's the key keep your worship alive keep your thanksgiving cry let it be coming out the bible calls it the sacrifice of joy and if you know god at all the god that you serve if you know him 
it does not deny sacrifices of all the bible says the sacrifices of god are a broken spirit a broken and a contrite heart this you do not despise joy in the midst of the storms there's another man the bible speaks about too his name is david second samuel chapter 12 he had committed adultery with a woman and she had a son for him and after covering everything and confessing to god he felt that was over the bible says the child was sick and the child was going to die and david who knew god went into fasting and prayer you know there are christians who I, i'm sorry to say this but <laughs> even me sometimes i'm caught up in it we don't pray until there's challenge so that's when we now begin to where is god where is god there are some people you will not see them in church praying in the afternoon on the altar anytime you see them know that there's a problem once you just come to church in the afternoon and see them on the altar like this praying there's there really is a problem and it's okay you know that's the human instinct david fasted for seven days you would think that god should have looked upon the fasting and the prayer and had mercy but the mercy of god was that on the seventh day the child died how many of you have prayed for a situation to leave and after your prayers it multiplied they stole your phone while you are praying for god to help them find the phone they stole your atm card and your money have you been there before ah <laughs> that's why this thing is a race so the bible says this christian is a race and let us run how not with joy with endurance because there are, there'll be times where things will happen and you will ask god and it will look like god is quiet and that silence is actually an answer you know the meaning of the silence god is just telling you you are just in one page of one chapter of your life there is another chapter oh somebody didn't hear what i said And when they told david that the child was dead now notice the bible says he tore his clothes and laid before god almost obviously naked and they told him that the child you have fasted for is dead the bible says he stood up went to his house washed took his bath wore his clothes anointed himself more like perfumed himself and then he came back to the house of god and worshiped it, that's crazy that's when you should be mourning but the bible says he worshipped and so the servants began to think that this our king he has mental issues maybe what happened to saul you know ancestral causes are, is the same way saul was mental this our king is already mental after all they are the same age something is wrong with him if he's in our time we say this brother needs deliverance let's go we need let's go for nine vg you are worshiping when your child you fasted for is dead and here was what david told them david said if if when the child was alive at least i did all i could do hoping god would save him and now that god didn't save him should i kill myself and god looked upon that sacrifice and gave him another son called solomon let me tell you five things that joy is to a believer and i'm done tonight because joy is the attitude of thanksgiving it's not just the money you bring it's not just uh, the dance step in fact the spirit of your thanksgiving is joy it must come out of joy like we have done your shout your excitement your dance it must be out of joy so what truly is joy to a believer why is god so concerned about it that he says in philippians 4 verse 4 rejoice in the lord always again i say rejoice what is it about this joy romans 12 12 he said rejoicing in hope most of the time the bible encourages you to rejoice or to have joy there are times where the situation does not warrant that you should be happy and that means that happiness is not joy happiness is a temporal or momentary activity based on certain occurrences that pleases the individual then what is joy number one joy is the strength of a believer Nehemiah chapter 8, I believe in verse 10. It says, the joy of the Lord is your what? Your strength. That is the reason why 
one thing the devil wants to steal from a believer is not your money you think it's your money you wanted to steal no it's your joy he's looking for so but because he doesn't know where your joy is he attacks the things around you that he hopes your joy is attached to because many of us have trained ourselves and it's not your fault but you know as human beings we we we, we have trained our emotional discharge to be based on the things that happen in our lives or the things that we have and jesus said a man's life does not consist of what he has jesus oh, not an apostle jesus many of us have built reputation on what we have acquired and it's okay to acquire those things they are good god has given us all things freely for life and godliness but those should not be the reason for your joy the bible says joy is your strength is your life so everything satan will attack around you he's attacking it hoping that it is connected to your joy so the moment he touches your money and he sees you depressed he say aha i've gotten the safe safe case the saving box of your joy is your money and he will stay on that finance until that believer catches a revelation of joy in the lord and then begins to rejoice in the midst of poverty then satan will let you go are we am i talking to somebody today the joy of the lord is your strength depression is death the bible says a merry heart doeth good like medicine you say but a broken spirit does what dry the bones at least i did a little of medical science i know that that is a picture of uh, um, um, what you call it this cancer that is in the bone what they call that kind of thing because the marrow in the bone is where you know your red blood cells are produced that's where something called erythropoiesis if you don't know go and study medicine you will know maybe when we get to heaven ask to apply for and the blood is what contains the life of a human being because all the mineral nutrients everything oxygen is there and the bible says a depressed soul a broken spirit snuffs life out of you that is why it's not good to dwell in depression and you know one thing about depression as when you when you decide to ask yourself why am i depressed you can't point to one thing yes or no i know why you are quiet it looks like i'm talking to a lot of people so i will do make do with the silence today ask a depressed man why are you depressed he can't point to the very one thing it's like a cloud that just hovers over the person in fact that's how it is spiritually if god opens your eyes it's like a dark cloud hovering over the head of that individual and all of a sudden the things that god has done for him before he will forget that's why he says bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the lord oh my soul and forget not his benefits because he's in depression you forget his benefits and that's the pathway to death then he mentions it who forgives your iniquities and heals your diseases who redeems your life from destruction and crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth your strength is renewed as the eagles joy is the strength of a believer number two joy is a sacrifice i've mentioned it to you that's what we saw in psalms 25 verse 6 the sacrifice of joy paul and silas prayed and sang while in pains i don't know if i'm in pains if there's a song that can go to god because at that time my brain is not functioning I can't even think of any praise and worship song. But the Bible says, in their pains and their torture, they prayed and they sang unto God at midnight. They were on an underground cell. And you know what? Every time a sacrifice of joy goes to heaven, breakthroughs are evident. The Bible says why they were doing that and the prisoners were hearing them okay if the prisoners were hearing them that means the prisoners also may have been mocking them say you people that they will kill very soon or you will stand try you, you are there which god that you are singing to that didn't save you and the bible says all of a sudden the foundations of the prison shook 
because of two men that decided to be joyful and give God a sacrifice of joy in the midst of their situation God said okay the day to free everybody in this prison is come prison break and he shook the foundation <laughs> you know what you know how they built prisons the Bible says the foundation shook till all the doors open that's what the sacrifice of joy can do you try it in the midst of your downtime wake up at midnight don't pray give God a sacrifice of praise that one hour of prayer turned into one hour of praise and dance like a madman one time a man called King David danced before God and his wife mocked him and God became jealous and angry the Bible says God shot her womb so you don't mock a praiser that's why be careful who you talk about oh. be careful who you are talking against or talking about if that person gives God a daily sacrifice of joy and of thanksgiving you are in trouble you better go and meet them and beg joy is a sacrifice number three joy is an attitude for the harvest I'm almost done with my, my message joy is the attitude for the harvest Isaiah 12 verse 4 verse 3 rather it says and with joy you shall draw waters from the wells of salvation so it's a fetcher that you use to draw Psalms 125 verse 5 it says those who sow in tears shall reap in what in what talk to me church in what that means you are not permitted to reap any harvest without so when God comes and tells you rejoice it means harvest time has come but the way you are going to cash in on that season is how by joy he says he that goeth forth verse 6 weeping bearing precious seed shall doubtless again return rejoicing bringing in the sheaves that's why I said we don't rejoice because all is well. We rejoice till all is your ticket. You don't enter into a season of harvest without joy. No, it will send you back. That season will send you back. Yes, I know when you went through the famine, it was painful. That's what we call seed time and harvest. But the Bible says you need an attitude for harvest. It's called what? Joy maybe today's thanksgiving is for somebody to rejoice because a new season is about to break on your life if you know i'm talking to you your amen can be louder a new season i know the problem now in church is believing now how can god is it today that god will bring me out of this problem but the bible says there's something called the day of salvation so joy is the attitude that you need you need to rejoice because a season is about to break up it says i will rejoice in the god of my salvation why because he will make my feet like the feet of a deer a deer is a very fast animal god is about to give you speed to recover everything you lost but what did he say you should do rejoice somebody say rejoice, rejoice. number four joy And this is the last for today is the atmosphere for the manifest presence of God Psalm 16 verse 11 joy is the atmosphere 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 for God to move on the earth amongst a people or in the life of an individual an atmosphere must be created the atmosphere for rain is what cloud isn't it so the atmosphere for the presence of God is what? Joy. Look at it. You will show me the path of life. What is the path there? It says, in your presence is fullness of joy. In the presence of God is what? Joy in its fullness. Now look at this. If heaven... If joy is the atmosphere of heaven that means if I can create joy in a place I have brought heaven to earth let me try again listen to what I will say if joy is the atmosphere of heaven the presence of God that means if I create joy 
around me what have i done i have brought heaven to earth and what was jesus's prayer your will be done in earth not on earth in earth if he said on earth it will have been on this earth but when he says in earth you must understand there are two earths in the scripture there is the earth that we walk on and there is the earth that habits us this body so when he says your will be done in earth he's talking about your life on earth will bring about the will of god fulfilled and of everything that god wants you to fulfill for him on earth is to create an atmosphere of joy always because in his presence is what the fullness of joy that means every time you find joy god is there but every time you find sorrow who is there uh, because it, when the spirit of god left saul what came upon saul an evil spirit there's no vacancy in the realm of the spirit there's one song we used to sing those days in sunday school thank god for sunday school i hope we do it here uh-huh when jesus in the family happy happy you happy happy you 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 have forgotten <laughs> family happy happy you happy okay let's try satan when satan in the family it's okay don't don't sing again <laughs> What I may be saying may be very simple, but sometimes it's not about hearing a new thing. Sometimes it's a fresh reminder of the things that should be part of our lives. God wants us to live in joy. That is the attitude for thanksgiving. Your thanksgiving is qualitative to God based on the degree of joy that is contained in it. If you like, bring 500,000 and you don't bring it with joy. God has, the Bible says, let him grieve, not give, not grudgingly, but cheerfully. For God loveth who? A cheerful. So you don't carry the Thanksgiving offering as if they are forcing you. And then you bring it to God and just drop it. See? As far as God is concerned, when that is absent of joy, he's not interested. But let's give thanks to God with joy, the attitude of joy. Knowing fully well the things he has done and the things that he will yet do because i must tell you this as i close thanksgiving is a registration process for increase put that at the back of your head walk through this year with it thanksgiving is the registration process when you get admission to school what's the first thing you do go to class but you know i know sometimes with our nigerian system you can start going to class but when you get admission to a school what is the first thing you do go for registration and there'll be people that will be mocking you within that period they say that your id number is written with pencil they say you don't even have id number so you ensure that you are registered first that makes you a bona fide student thanksgiving is the registration process every time you give god thanks what you, what is hearing in his ear is not thank you what is hearing is increase me increase me increase me and sammy says in psalm 71 verse 21 thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side are we ready to give god thanks this morning please rise on your feet i'm done tonight okay ke kabani zunubi ke kabani salama ke kabani yanchi ke kabani warkasua ke kabani kima Ma so ina na gode. Let's start it again. Ke kashare hawaye. Ke kabani zunubi. Ke kabani sala. Don't just sing it. Meditate on what you are singing. Wakasua Kekabani Se Soina Nagode Suchana 
ninake sujana sujana godia ninake godia godia sujana ninake vince dona godia ninake godia come on let's declare sujana ninake Godia neneke Again Suchada neneke Suchada Suchada Godia neneke Hey ma soina ma soina ma gode You know what I'm done no But shortly before I came up while I was sitting down there the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said of every things that we should be grateful for in case you may be offended by what I'm about to say I'm very sorry but this is what the Lord told me of every things we should be grateful for as a church we should be grateful for God keeping us together You know the Bible says I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. He didn't say the gates of hell will not attempt. Is there any church, any living church that doesn't go through trials? All kinds of arrows from hell. Sometimes he brings discord amongst us. So people are not talking to, to themselves in the same church. Sometimes he brings affliction. You bury this person this month. Two months later you bury this person. It's like every family is losing one person. of everything we should be grateful for that god kept us together how old is this church 24 years in this town go and do your research the lifespan of a church in this city i dare you go do your research and not just lifespan that they are able to sustain the impact if you have noticed the move of god in northern nigeria there's something about it that doesn't make it last but god has kept us together we may not have a very big structure a mega church but let me tell you something the church is you and i it's not this building are you hearing me we may be small we may just be less than 100 or 200 but do you know that there is a potential that we can take over nations here because when god looks at a man he doesn't see a man he sees a nation Somebody was pregnant with twins. She went to God. God said, "Two nations are struggling in your womb." Every one of us here has the potential of a nation. Now, why we will be grateful for every other thing? We should thank him that he kept us together. And that means that we are still relevant in God's purpose. And I want to prophesy this. I feel like the spirit is saying I should prophesy. It means that the revival that will hit this city and shake the northeast, this church must play a role in it. I wish your amen come in alive this morning. I wish your amen has joy inside of it. Can we sing that song again before I go to sit down? Kekashare hawaye. Kekaba Come on, sing it. Kekabani sa. Kekabani ya. Kekabani wa kaswa. Kekabani ni ma. Aso ni ma. Aso ni.